Welcome. The Current presents Line Check, a series of public forum events with Minnesota artists discussing various topics affecting the local art scene. My name is Diane, host of The Current's local show, and I'll be sitting down with Minnesota musicians, artists, and friends, and a look behind the scenes at what artists need to do to build their careers and keep their careers on track. Today... And continuing this spring, we'll be discussing an array of topics from social media to the financial side of the music business to what it's like being and performing during the pandemic. Register for the live virtual events or catch them on The Current's YouTube channel. I'd like to take the time to quick thank the NPR staff and The Current staff for all their hard work in making Line Check possible. And I would also like to thank our live audience for tuning in and being with us here today. We will be opening up for questions near the end of the session. So look forward to that and take notes. For artists, social media is a must and it's how a lot of people brand themselves. It's how artists share a bit of who they are. And it's an enormously effective marketing tool for gaining listenership and concert goers. The social media platform TikTok is taking over the music industry by storm worldwide. And artists left and right are signing record deals, gaining thousands of follower, followers and sharing their art and creativity at lightning speed, including many Minnesota artists. And I am with a few today. Mark Malman is a recording artist and film and TV producer and composer. He's been written about by Rolling Stone, Pitchfork, USA Today, and so on. He's released 10 albums, 15 plus years of touring in, in the U.S. and U.K. And as a professional composer, Mark Malman has scored music for Lionsgate, Sony, 20th Century Fox, to name a few. His songs have been featured on This American Life, MTV, VH1E, and more Let's get to a couple of clips of Mark Malman's TikToks. Hearing the Go-Go's today, it's really easy to push aside that this band was essentially a punk band that made it top 40. I mean, you got Belinda Carlisle, who's a previous member of the Germs for a short time under the moniker Dottie Danger. And the Go-Go's, they sprouted from the L.A. underground with bands like X and Fear. Even in 1981, the first record deal Go-Go signed was with IRS Records, home to bands like The Falls, Scoffish, and The Cramps. But as the major labels grew the band in popularity and they were ushered into the MTV age, the punk edge was shaken, but mostly in marketing, because when you crank vacation, that bass guitar rings raucous and raw, like any of the great punk bands of the late 70s and early 80s. Alabama Shakes played Hold On on Conan O'Brien, February 7, 2012, and then followed up a mere three weeks later on Saturday Night Live. So this tune, Hold On, it went on to become a radio hit. It's southern rock and blues with a slow rock and muscle shoals feel. That term, muscle shoals, comes from a recording studio down south where classic soul sound was invented. But let's get back to 2012. That year would find Alabama Shakes performing the biggest festival in the U.S., Bonnaroo, Lollapalooza, and three Grammy nominations. Well-deserved because Hold On is a magnificently inspiring song, and it's in a major key, which to me is what gives it that flavor. The static stops and the chromatic notes dancing around the major key. It's like a wet sun shower on a scorching August Alabama afternoon. Mark Malman is quite a music scene veteran, and my other live guest is Xavier Goodman, who is a burgeoning up-and-comer in the scene. Xavier is a TikTok star and musician who's released his first album, From Your Drafts, on April 1st of 2021. His account, at Xavier Goodman 1, has 750,000 followers and 15 million likes. Let's see a couple of Xavier Goodman's TikToks. Lyrics needed. Check me out. <coughs> Would've done it if I could've done it. If I should've did it. If I would've did it. I'm a metaphysics, hella melanated. Think I'm educated from me. <coughs> okay. Effectuated with a section eight. I ate a full meal with a full house. Think I'm full now. It's a full house and a dog pound. Let the dogs out. Let my dogs out. A flower grows alone, but it's never lonely because it's surrounded by other flowers. But if you were to take that flower and surround it by weeds, the flower could not grow properly because the weeds keep taking from it. But if you were to take that flower and take it away from the weeds, it would grow properly. It's okay to be alone to grow. It's okay to be alone to heal. Huh? You come into the world with yourself, you die with yourself. You sleep with yourself, you wake up with yourself. You are with yourself more than anybody else in the world. It is okay to be alone. To escape toxic people, bruh. It is okay to be alone. Know that. 
It is okay to be to yourself, by yourself, with yourself. It is okay. It's so good to be joined by two amazing artists here today, Mark Malman and Xavier Goodman, live online check. Thank you for being here, both of you. Um, yeah. Yeah. Xavier Goodman, let's let's start with you. Um, you have perhaps more followers on TikTok than a majority of Minnesota artists. And we, we, we just viewed this very casual freestyle vibe you got going on. Can you give us a little bit of a backstory into your mind as a creator on this platform of TikTok? Yeah, definitely. So uh, it starts off when I was like a kid in fifth grade. I took acting classes and I fell in love with it. So I stuck with that and that kind of just incorporates into my music. So I bring my freestyle or, or such of a, uh, what do we call? It's like you're improv mm -hmm. things as it happens, but that improv just turned into freestyling. So I just freestyle whatever comes to my mind. And it's obviously connected with lots of people. And it's so cool to see that happening to someone from right here in Minnesota. Mark Mullman, um, we watch your videos and we see this music historian uh, giving uh, us backstory and details on things we didn't probably know about uh, the lives of musicians we know and love. And as someone with years and years of experience in the industry, what, what motivates some of your TikTok videos and or have got going into this uh, social media platform? Uh, for me, it was sort of a fluke. It was, it's just a hobby. Uh, you know, I, um, I, I worked in TV news for um, like nine or 10 years at CCO. So I, back in the day when I was starting my career as a musician, I was making and editing news stories every day. And um, on my TikTok, I, I just, you know, one day I was researching this um, song on my own about uh, a Joni Mitchell song called Tin Angel. And I thought, you know, I should I should just make TikToks about this because it's fun. And and in pandemic, uh, you know, in, in lockdown, I'm sorry, it's still going. But in lockdown, I, I just I was killing time, you know, and and people seem to like um, music history fans seem to um, vibe with what I was doing. So it's it's uh, it's because it's gone from a hobby uh, from a uh, like a hobby to a passion and it's a daily thing. Amazing. Yeah. There's so many different, tic uh, social media platforms out there from Twitter to Facebook, um, of course, Instagram. And then this TikTok is like this, uh, combination between YouTube and, uh, <laughs> Snapchat. And uh, what, if this question is for both of y'all, uh, what about TikTok? And drew you to the app in the first place because I remember learning about it and being like, hmm, interesting. And I see, kept seeing a bunch of people um, post videos from TikTok, but I wasn't quite like, I'm going to use this app yet. And I think a lot of artists are hesitant about signing up for new and novel apps. But um, as as both humans who have used the TikTok app in, to a really great advantage, what did you see in this app that? other social media platforms didn't have and i'll start with you xavier yeah so back in 2015 tiktok was called musically and i was like one of the first people to like find out about find out about the app and i uh started making videos on it and i noticed that when i posted a video on youtube i would get like five ten views nothing really major but when i posted it on tiktok or musically back then I would get like 9,000 views and I was like, wait a minute, hold on. So it's a platform that you can really post something. It's nothing like, it's nothing like any other platform. You can post something and an audience of over thousands of people can see it within a matter of 24, day, uh, 24 hours. So uh, I think that's the beauty of TikTok. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And it's, and it's more so uh, realistic. So you can like wake up one day from your sleep and then make a TikTok and then blow up. You don't really have to uh, dress up and put on your best. Uh, it's not like, yeah, it's not like any other platform. You really can just be yourself, be authentic, uh, show the true side of you, true version of you. And that can really just blow up because people can uh, people can vibe with that and people can uh, connect with you in, in that kind of light. Mark Malman, same question. 
Well, um, I, I, I totally agree with him as a user. I, I think one of the things um, that Xavier points out is that if, if you enjoy this app and you use it, you, you have a bigger understanding on what lane you want to get into. And I, I think the one thing that shines through on this app more than any other app that I've experienced is simply sincerity. It works for people who can be themselves and do their passion. And for me, it's making these music history things for Xavier, it's sharing his daily experience. But you can tell immediately when someone's being thirsty and it just doesn't it just doesn't jive. And 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 you'll see big celebrities will come on and they'll say, like Elton John or Lindsay Lohan will, will be like, I'm on TikTok now, as if they this isn't that kind of community and it's not gated, but you have to learn the communication skills of it. And and what I love about it is for the most part, I mean, there's still people buying their way on TikTok, but for the most part, you can reach an audience of people who want to hear your sincere concepts and feelings. I mean, it it is an art form. It's just that um, society never adapts to new things. <laughs> you know, it just, it just takes them a while to see how it fits in. Mm -hmm. Mark, you are actually one of the main inspirations between why I wanted to have a conversation on TikTok. Um, Mark, you, uh, you and I, uh, you invited me to perform on one of your shows at the Parkway Theater locally. And we were in the green room and I walk in and you're like, you know, live on TikTok in the green yeah. room. And then you like started kind of showing me all these things about the app. And I was just, and it got me really excited about that. And that's another cool a feature about the app to take advantage of. Tell me more about this experience of using TikTok Live. You know, I really, uh, I, I, for me, uh, I'm I'm a full time already without without apps, and I kind of have a lot of freedom in that way, where I'm not trying to build my career on a platform. So I just really experiment with this uh, app, and you can. There are people that go live that. Um, it's a different lane, you know, so you can, you know, um, whereas like an app like Fa Facebook or Instagram, they're tr constantly trying to keep up with trends and, and in, in with TikTok right now, since it's the dominator in social media, it has little, little offshoots and different artists prevail in those offshoots. Um, it, it, you know, I can go on at night and see certain artists um, in my algorithm, which is probably different than Xavier's because we're watching different stuff. Everybody's is different. As a user, I can see people performing live for three, four, sometimes 10,000 people. And it is just like me in my studio or Xavier in his room. It's awesome. You can reach people all over the world and you can reach them with your art, with your emotions, with your ideas. It's not about... There is a thirst for fame on there, but if you go past that thirst, you find artists communicating their soul, communicating their spirit, and that resonates. It resonates really hard, you know? I fully agree. Um, yeah, watching that and, and kind of just seeing people express themselves emotionally and from their heart is is really awesome to see. Uh, yeah, and I especially see that with you, Xavier. Uh, there's many people uh, ways people use the, the the TikTok platform and and you definitely have this like you know way to you talk to the camera um, and way that you freestyle. Um, and tell me about how y you've kind of viewed a lot of other TikTok videos and then maybe effectively been able to make your own unique voice heard in in the style that you have. Definitely. So. Uh... Watching other TikToks, I've noticed that uh, they've genuinely just been themselves, and that made them their uh, their own lane or their own brand. It's like you're branding yourself into be this this person that when your audience goes to, they know that you're going to be authentic. They they know that you're going to be you. And I took from that, and I basically thought about what makes me me. What makes and what can I do to create an image of myself online? How can I be my authentic self online? So I just thought about the stuff that I that made me me, which is my acting background, my music background, 
uh, film, directing, writing. I just thought about everything I like to do and just incorporated that into my TikToks. I, I, I create TikToks as if I'm FaceTiming somebody or talking to somebody. Uh, or if if I got if I got like a friend that's in front of me, I like to create TikToks like that. There are some obvious like downsides to social media platforms like TikTok, and one of them can probably be like overuse or addiction. And how are you able to find a balance between? Um, have you ever caught yourself spending too much time on the app, or like you know to be real and, and stuff like that? I think you know there's always people looking out. Uh, uh, in ways that social media can be overtaking. Um, and this, this question is for both of you. Um, Mark, oh, we can start with you. Uh, I mean, there are definitely times where I've said, uh, you know, oh, I'm spending too much time on TikTok. But I think as a culture, we have to recognize that the word addiction isn't a sweeping statement. <laughs> I'm seven years sober. I, I quit alcohol uh, on my own, and it wasn't that hard of a journey like some other people have. And, um, this is uh, this is more the generally uh, uh, not responding to your question, but the overall idea of that. If somebody's spending too much time on an app, I don't think that is uh, generally that harmful <laughs> of a thing. Th this app has uh, incredible amounts of information. It's super deep. I'm my algorithm for me is designed for learning. I'm keeping up with politics. I'm keeping up. You know, the, the funny thing is, it's what we accept and label as a culture as dangerous. You know, keep in mind, there was a time when books were actually considered dangerous to our children. And and I don't know what the difference is between binging an hour and a half on TikTok and someone binging nine hours of, uh, of a Netflix series. So I don't think there's anything harmful about TikTok. It's, and actually, it's the most... Um, like policed app for like kids and stuff like that. It's really, I mean, they, they're, it's hard for them, I'm sure, but it, it does a good job of keeping it. You know, you can't be violent. You can't, there's a lot of language you can't use for me talking about punk rock. That's tough, but I'm really positive about the app. I think it makes, it's made my life a lot, a lot better. Just not as a as a as a creator, but just as a participant in in listening and and you know like Xavier's account is awesome and, and local musicians um, nerd has a great account you know. Absolutely, well said, uh, Xavier. Same question. I don't really find anything addictive about the app. I would just say, I take, I just go into the app with a a creative. I'm looking for something to spark a creative side of me, if that kind of makes sense. So I just go into the app uh, looking for some kind of entertainment in terms of what can entertain me slash inspire me to create myself. Because at times, yes, it can get addictive, but I feel like that's only because you're watching somebody else create. You're watching somebody else live their life versus living your own. So in turn... It's like your personality is online. There's a joke that goes around on TikTok where uh, people just hear a viral TikTok and then they live that life of that TikTok. Like it, 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 people. Yeah. So in my mind, it can get addictive, but only in the terms of when you when you're watching more than you're creating or when you're when your personality is online. Between. Uh editing multiple shots and adding captions is tiktok hard to learn is it is it how accessible is it it seems like extremely accessible but um it you know i think apps and technology can get daunting for a lot of people um tell me about the learning curve with uh with tiktok uh mark i'll start with you what's cool about the app is it's um in a certain way it's 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 so deep it's so vast and you, you get on it at first and you just, you just are inundated with seem seemingly random, um, stuff. But the more you, the more you refine what you're looking for, the deeper you get. Um, so my feed is 
a lot of paranormal people, a lot of people doing informational content, educational content like I do. Um, and then a lot of mental health um, content from, you know, real certified therapists and psychologists. So I'm really on like more of the informational lane of TikTok than someone might be who is just like in like the social goofiness. There is like a early YouTube element to this. So it, you know, you kind of ride with it and have to see where it goes. But I mean, the learning curve is just based on like what, what you want to learn. It, it is just a video game, you know, like any social media, it's just a computer program. It's just a video game. It's not part of tangible reality. So I mean, it's, it's, it's as easy as you make it. I make all of my content in my studio with other programs and with cameras and lights. So it's very, it's very, it's more like a news program than, than anything. So that learning curve would take a long time. I worked in news for 10 years, so it's different for everybody. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Same question for you, uh, Xavier, the learning curve of of figuring out the app is, was that a a challenge or uh, tell me about that? Yeah, I really don't think it's a challenge. It's when you're, because it's so authentic. Like you're, I, I treat the app like I'm FaceTiming somebody. Like I have a message to say, or something to, like a message to say, and I'm FaceTiming somebody to let them know what's on my mind currently. Like you FaceTime your best friend, and you want to let them know something. That's how I treat this app, and it's pretty easy to use. Yeah, I don't see it as a like a job or you're preparing or you know how you have a essay to do or assignment to do a certain way you have to have your uh your your essay structured you have to have your lines like this and this like this i don't see it like that i see it as i'm getting on this platform to share or to inspire uh Mm -hmm. someone else to create or somebody else to yeah just facetime i'm that's how i see my the app absolutely I want to also add that Mark Mullman is our musical guest of the show, and we're going to be playing um, some music videos from him, very talented musician. And uh, But before we get to that, I also uh, talked to the band Dury, and we had a session on Monday where we recorded some of their music, and then also did an interview that we're going to air. And Dury was formed in 2020 uh, in the wake of the COVID pandemic, and quarantine siblings Austin and Taryn joined forces under their family named Dury to write and produce an all new body of work titled Suburban Legend. Inspired by their shared childhood experiences in the suburbs of Minneapolis, Dury embraces a nostalgic yet honest look at the past and boundless hopes for the future, combining uh, Austin's music with uh, fresh Taryn's fresh new perspective for making innovative music and f- on f- an innovative take on familiar sounds. Let's check out a couple of Dury's TikTok videos and dive into their our interview with Dury. I am Diane, and I'm sitting here with Dury of Minneapolis, well, Burnsville, 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 Minnesota, a suburb. How exciting. (laughs) And y'all formed during the pandemic and now are enjoying this widely acclaimed success off of an amazing single called Who's Laughing Now. You were just um, also featured on the first Avenue stage for Best New Bands. Oh my gosh. It was crazy. Yeah. Tell me more about that experience. Yeah, it was wild. You know, this whole thing has been just like a roller coaster. Like as soon as, I mean, we started the project a little while ago, but uh, as soon as the song started going off, it's been like every day some crazy email comes in or some crazy new like, hey, here's this awesome thing. And we've just been like 
soaking it in and rolling with it all. And, and like, you know, we played, yeah, we played first Avenue, the best new bands on the main stage. It was the craziest thing ever, but like, we've only played, we'd only played five shows ever before that. So like, I'm really a newbie here. Yeah. I've only played five shows ever of anything. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been kind of a, kind of a, you know, light speed pace, but, uh, but it's been awesome. And, and at, at the show, like everyone knew the words like so much. I could hear the crazy. crowd louder than the th- the stuff in my ears. And, like, like the drums and stuff. Oh yeah. my yeah. gosh. Uh, it was wild. In the videos, it's just like remarkable how much you can just hear the whole room. Oh, you can so feel cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, not something you get to experience every show with everything oh. is. Yeah. yeah. And I got to imagine it feels therapeutic almost and just, like good to have an empowering to not only be singing these goofy sort of autobiographical lyrics, but then to hear everyone singing them yeah, back to you. Absolutely. And totally. Say, and yeah. it's, it's so funny that this is the song that's blowing up. Cause it's like, yep. It's like self-referential and like, it's uh, it's talking about like, you know, it's talking about itself being successful because I like finished writing it as it was blowing up on TikTok. So like it, the first little verse blew up on TikTok and on the way to the studio to like record the real deal, uh-huh. that's when I like wrote the third verse and that's all like, it's all happening. You know, I just paid the rent making music with my friends. And the original like p- plan for the song was like, it was all going to be a downer. It was just going to be like downer, downer, downer. Mm-hmm. And then, and then the world and proved up. me wrong. And then, yeah. so we adjusted it and now it's like, I don't know. It's been really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? Well, and at that, let's bring it to TikTok, yeah. which is obviously this wildly popular social media platform. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. unlike, uh, any of the platforms that are out there, you know, social media, as far as Twitter and Instagram and even YouTube. And it's like this, amalgamation of all these different and then it seems like y'all have sort of figured out this sort of algorithm of <laughs> I know yeah, like so. it feels like we figured it out but we have no idea we're, we, I literally don't know anything about TikTok yeah I, I do make all any the TikTok sense. posting yeah <laughs> I I'm gonna yeah. be super honest I don't even know how to make a TikTok whoa oh so Austin's doing Austin's the, the one that put yeah. puts them together yep Taryn here yeah has never had any social media until I made her make an Instagram. <laughs> no kidding. And life. I don't really use it. <laughs> yeah. Have you posted anything? I, I mean, it's not I for everybody. So something yeah. like a year ago. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but, I got a um, comment on that one post. I was just like, you need to post more. <laughs> it's like the one comment. You're not wrong. <laughs> but but now you have to do it not you have to not post out of spite for that person now. Oh. Yeah. No <laughs> yeah. Just make it a battle. Um, but yeah, no, on TikTok, um, you know, we, we got really lucky with that, with the little demo going really good. And then we like, we saw the momentum and I, and I had only written the first verse and chorus of it, but I like called up my buddy that has a studio and I was like, we got to record this like tomorrow and we're going to, and normally you wait like six weeks or whatever to post on Spotify and stuff. We just like, we were going to post it as soon as we were done. And so we ended up like there were three days between the TikTok going off and the demo being made and then it going up on Spotify. And it was just like uh, the craziest. Exactly how you're not supposed to do exactly. that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. You're not supposed to do that at all. Um, but yeah. And then that went, went, was going pretty good. And then we made the like yellow backdrop, like lyric video in the garage and we had a backdrop from our like Kickstarter that we did. Mm. So we made that like the next day or two. Mm-hmm. And then, and then that's the one that like super blew up and, and that's what catapulted the whole TikTok thing. And, and, um, we've just kind of been riding that high ever since, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. But, um, yeah, so we, you know, I don't know if there's any, uh, algorithmic, uh, tricks other than just kind of like being totally real and just like, being yeah. goofy and letting people see you goofy and letting people see you when you, you know, don't look good and whatever and sing bad and just like, <laughs> just being real. And that sounds cheesy as heck. I know. But, and it's, but you know but what? it's true. Yeah. All the movies were true, I yeah. guess. Yeah. All the movies were right. All the movies are true. Just be yourself. <laughs> uh, to self-reference, I, um, I got back from Puerto Rico recently and uh, a video of a fish slapping my face because I was taking a selfie by <laughs> oh it. My Put God. it on TikTok, got more views than most of mine. Nice. So, yes. There you go. <laughs> hey, people love to see just... Yeah, it's funny. The real it's deal, yeah. Kind of, you know? Exactly. And that was another thing too, just like, just 
leaning into just being funny and goofy and just letting that be our shtick, you know, mm-hmm. it seems to be, uh, the trick. <laughs> it's been a little easier too, just that we can kind of play off of each other in things like that. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And it's also so handy that like our whole shtick is like DIY. So we can just like set up a phone in the garage and like make real content. And they're like, that's, that's the content. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> what drew you to TikTok when you were first, even before, uh, who's laughing now came out what what it, what drew you to that social media platform because a lot of people i remember hearing about tiktok and being like oh this is odd a lot of people are using it but i was kind of like uh waiting on whether i was going to sign up for it or right. not and yeah. um what do you think what did you see in this platform that that made you want to sign up for it you know i uh i uh I, I see a lot of people that like whenever the kids are into something and we like resist it Mm-hmm. And I just like don't want to be that guy. So, <laughs> so like you know what the kids say, skinny jeans are out. I'm done with skinny. You know, like that kind of <laughs> right, thing. Right. Just like, <laughs> they're right because like I remember when I was a kid and I was like saying stuff and doing stuff and no, and the older people wouldn't listen to me. And then mm-hmm. so, uh, so yeah. So as soon as I was like, all the kids were on TikTok. I was like, well, because I got to start a TikTok now. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, and the, the, TikTok is interesting because it's like you can just explode on it and it's like uh, other places you have to kind of have these gradual gradual growth right. and tiktok is just if you hit it right and just kind of get lucky and people connect what you're doing sky's the limit and you can just blow up like crazy so um so it, every time i say it's like it's like a slot machine you're just like rolling the dice see what you get right. you know <laughs> so um yeah so we just kind of got lucky with some content people really liked and and uh, are figuring out now what people like and and uh, trying to keep going. Yeah, is it so? It's so fast paced. Is that what you think make me makes it so easy to blow up? Because the you know the videos are short. Yeah, and they're filled with like you know quick content that that is easy to laugh at quickly and then get go to the next video. Exactly, right. maybe it's, that's it's part of the completely addicting and it. Yeah. And it, <laughs> the way the algorithm learns what you like is like crazy. It's, it's scary. Like, wow. It's like. Okay. We've had, I've had so many instances of like, how did you know I like this? Like, what's, oh my God, you reading my mind? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, yeah, the algorithm is spooky and I don't want to know how it works, but. Um, it's um, working for us. Though. Hey, it's working for us. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep, keep that train rolling. <laughs> is it, is it hard to learn? Is it between like um, editing multiple shots and then um, pacing out the lyrics and adding the lyrics? Like, cause I, I noticed that you can get lyrics to pop up as you're saying them rather than just have a caption. Yeah. There's, um, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Whenever we do like stylized, like lyric videos, I cheat and I just use like, like, professional like like premiere pro and i edit the whole video oh, and, then, cool. and then i just put it on there um but then otherwise um there's ways you can edit it within the app and i just got like a different app to edit the videos and it's way better than tiktok uh you're yeah. so editing. excited about that i've heard about this app so many times it's so good it's nice. oh. really funny nice tiktok you can't <laughs> split a video and it's obnoxious this one you can it makes it so much easier anyway <laughs> nice love it um but yeah so tiktok's definitely not the most efficient way to edit a video but um but it's easy to learn. It's pretty intuitive. And um, yeah, you just keep trying. Maybe I'll learn sometime. Yeah. 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 Just Google it. If you have a question, <laughs> just Google it. That's how I've made it through life so far. Same. Just Google I love everything. It. I love it. Um, um, I mean, you've touched on this a bit already, um, but what for people who are interested in getting into TikTok and to promote their music, what advice would you give them? You know, I um, I see a lot of people trying to promote the music on TikTok, and they're doing TikToky things, mm-hmm. and that can work, and you can get followers that way. But those followers aren't like into your music, right? You know what I mean? And so, right. like, mm-hmm. and so I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make is is making their TikTok about whatever the trends are instead of like the thing you're trying to promote. Gotcha. And so, like, we. Um, you know, we, we, st- we do the goofy stuff. We do the, you know, whatever dumb thing is going on. We do that, but we always try and tie it back to something we're doing with our music. And we always try and keep our content, you know, on, uh, you know, focused on what we're trying to, what we're trying to get across. And, and that way that when people follow you, you know, they're following you for the reason of your music. And so like, that's, 
that's like a real follower. It's not just they saw your dumb dance and think you're cool. You know what I mean? Right. So um, that's been really beneficial. And and uh, and then also just like don't give up. It's kind of just like it'll <laughs> suck for a long time and you'll have a ton of flops and whatever. Like right. just keep going. <laughs> That was a good answer. Boom. Solid. Boom, Very baby. quality advice. Yeah. I'm practicing all day. <laughs> yeah. Austin and Taryn of Dury. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us. Yeah, thanks for having it's us. It's The Current. My name's Diane, and this is Austin and Taryn. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was a performance from Mark Malman. Thanks for your contributions musically. Love it all the time. Um, <laughs> we are here talking about TikTok, this uh, social media platform that really is taking over the music industry worldwide. We're seeing artists once again just blowing up over this platform. And Dury was one of them. You heard my conversation with them. And their song, uh, Who's Laughing Now, became a... Uh, a part of the Currents Hall of Fame chart show, and uh, you can check out all these artists on on um, on Spotify, on on TikTok, of course, Instagram, and check out their music. It's so wonderful. All of these artists are so talented, and it's such an honor to be sitting with you guys and and uh, learning more about these certain things. And yeah, I want to ask us a uh, same question that I asked to Dury and and that is what advice would you give to other artists or people looking to share their uh, art on the platform and we'll start with uh, Xavier. I would say that you have to really look at other artists and understand that the beginning of their career they weren't getting took taken serious. You might get looked at as corny 
it may not work when you first do it, but that's the process of becoming an artist. Is you literally you're opening a new lane. You're not doing what everybody else is doing. You're doing. You're finding a way to incorporate yourself in your art. So understand that you're going to fail. It may not blow up when you first start. Understand that it may be corny. Understand that people may not like it when you first do it. But if you really love what you do, you're going to really. You have to be your biggest cheerleader, even when nobody else can see your vision. You have to see your vision and you have to stick with it and you have to stay to it no matter what happens. And that's one thing. That's one uh, piece of advice that I give any artist that's trying to do anything uh, on TikTok. Uh, yeah. And just post consistently because you never know what it is. Because it's usually and you. Here's with a lot of artists, too. The song that blows up is never the song that you you usually like or you think it's going to blow up. It's always the the random like the song that blew up for me. It was like a throwaway song that I wrote. Like I, I wrote a few verses when I was like in high school and I was like, uh, let me try this. And the thing that I tried is the thing that blew up. And I was like, what? what ha, ha? I don't even like the song like that. So trust in what you have going on. Trust in your vision and stick to it no matter what else. What happens? And Mark Bowman, what, what advice would you give to people who are looking to use this platform or um, even just uh, art, making art and in general? To be honest, uh, Xavier, I'm just, what you just said was so profound and truthful and, and moving for me to hear, even as an artist who's been in this industry for over 20 years, it, sometimes it takes a long time to learn what you just said. And it, it reminds me of when I was learning screenwriting, when I was in LA, I, uh, there's a book called Save the Cat, and it's about writing screenplays. And it says, write the movie you want to see, not the movie you want to write. What's interesting about that quote to me is, the movie that you want to write is your ego talking. The movie that you want to see is your soul speaking. The music that you want to write might come from a place of insecurity. It might come from a place of compromise. It might come place from trauma. But the music that you want to listen to is actually a cue to what your soul wants, to speak your soul. So I would say, in addition to what Xavier already said, which is incredibly insightful and profound and, and so truthful, I would say also that the cues are all around you as to what your soul wants and your ego might be telling you, I need to, you know, for me, I get excited to put jewelry on. I get excited to cut a mohawk in my hair. This is all things that I, that make me feel that, that allow me to express my true self. And they're not something that society says a 38 year old man should be doing. But it works on TikTok. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it communicates to people on that app. What Xavier is saying is it's true with so many songs that I cover in my in my TikTok. Um, the Pretenders, um, you know, they didn't they thought that Brass in Pocket was a throwaway song. Seal had um, um, not kissed by a. Um, yeah, Kiss by a Rose, Kiss from a Rose. Seal didn't know. He, he thought that was a throwaway song. Push It by, by Salt and Peppa was actually a B-side that they just needed to um, fill. It was just a filler song. They're actually making fun of pop songs in the lyrics. They recorded those lyrics in a bathroom. And again, it blew up. I think it's because people, when they let their guard down, their heart speaks. And when your heart speaks... People, people feel validated by another person who's simply being human in a world where there's so much acting and posturing and pretending because people want the lottery ticket. And you're never going to win the lottery. You have to accept that. Just live your life, no matter what. If you're on the mountain or if you're in the studio, just be sincere. And that's what matters. I want to open up the questions to the audience. We have a live audience with us here, and uh, we have 
Mark Malman and Xavier Goodman, two incredibly talented uh, artists with us today. And um, please uh, open up and uh, what would you like to hear from them, audience? And um, while we're waiting for a question to come through or two or... um, I'd like to once again thank you to NPR and, and the current staff for making this all possible and also plug future line check conversations that we're having. We're going to be talking about navigating shows during the pandemic. We're going to be talking about um, uh, NFTs, <laughs> which are a big thing coming up. We're going to talk about making applying for grants. <laughs> I think you both know how expensive it is to uh be doing music in the industry between gear and getting concerts. It's like, there's so much that goes into it. And, um, we're here to, to, uh, provide insights and, and all of that kind of stuff within the music industry. And cause that's what we love to do here on the current is, um, is, is, uh, educate and inspire. Um, I know Xavier, you, you have a different, accounts how do you cross pollinate i have a question from the bue baker band uh between from tiktok to twitter or even instagram usually i like to repost the video Mm -hmm. on like say for instance if i make a video on tiktok i would take that video and post it on twitter or take that video and post it onto youtube shorts or uh uh snapchat uh snapchat shorts Mm -hmm. uh, or something like that yeah, or just take take a small portion because I noticed that uh, it's like a five to 15 second loop of where people are entertained the most. And then after that, they like swipe, swipe on the video. So yeah, using a short clip, five to 15 seconds and just posting that. And then adding the link to wherever you want your audience to go to. So if I post it on Twitter, uh, you're, you're, you have to tell them like what to do, like go, go like the video on Snapchat or go like my video. I mean, Snapchat, go like the video on TikTok or Instagram, follow my YouTube. You have to give direction and where you want your audience to go. Yeah. So just reposting everything, posting mm-hmm. it to your story, to your, yeah, just re you can repost it. It doesn't matter how old the video is or yeah. Cool. I have a, a question from a staffer here, Julia. Uh, she says, production skills are a thing on TikTok and there's a style and feel. Do you advise people to just do it or practice? For either one of you, you could jump in. I think that the thing, the thing comes when the practice happens when you're doing it. So instead of thinking, stop, get out your head. Stop, stop thinking and just do. And then once you mm. do it, you'll yes. notice, hmm, it's not the way I want it yet, but it's I'm I'm doing something. I'm creating, and that's the thing of an uh, of an artist. You're a creator. You create things. Stop. You're you're, you're going to be your biggest critic, and that's okay because you're, you're it's like you're 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 critiquing yourself as you're going, but you have to fail to get better. You have to fail to know that I don't like the way that turned out, so I know what to do now to make it better, and that's the thing. So just create. Just create. Don't. If you're taking two months to think about a video, you're taking way too long. Just post the video. Just post it. And and through your post, through your actions, is it's like your practice. It's like homework. It's literally like homework. Yeah. I mean, what's cool about um what I'm hearing from Xavier is it's it's it makes a ton of sense. It's totally different from my process. And that's what's what's cool about, you know, I tell If I'm talking at a school or something, I always say, like, if you look at Coachella, everybody got to Coachella from a completely different point. You know, if you want to be a doctor, you have to follow these certain rules. If you want to be a professional musician, there's no playbook for this. Uh, uh, There is no playbook. And, you know, I'm a big fan of researching the Marx Brothers and the vaudeville experience and and touring uh, as a musician, you try something out one night or the Marx Brothers, they would try a joke out one night. It didn't it wouldn't work. They wouldn't use it anymore. And they would keep going. Um, I think what's dangerous about all social media for an artist is you can start chasing numbers. You can start recognizing uh, the wrong thing. So like 
you have to make something to a point um, that that might appeal to people, but at the same time, what's past your career and what's past your numbers on social media is we have a limited time on this earth as people. And whatever you spend your day doing is a part of your story, is a part of your narrative. If you're chasing a carrot by making content, I don't think you're valuably using your experience on this earth. If you've ever seen um, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, there's a beautiful scene at the end where Sean Penn is supposed to take a picture of an animal and he moves aside and looks at the animal and never takes the picture. And the point of that is you can't, you can't capture life and experience life at the same time. So you have to just make sure that, that you don't ever lose sight of your time on earth to social media or to, to anything, you know? I have a, uh, time for, uh, I think one more, uh, quip from both of y'all. And, um, I'm going to read off a, a, a few different questions and, and you guys can kind of answer which ones you think you'd like to comment on. Um, one is from Chris Wald. He says, how often do you post and do you post just when you have an idea or some sort of schedule? Uh, Colin Bracewell, he says, how long have you been on the app? How often do you post trends? And then Michelle Bracewell says, how, how important is it to tag others in posts? Uh, if a post is not receiving much attention, should you delete it? Um, I'll let either of you jump in. Go ahead, Xavier. Yeah, for sure. I don't usually tag people unless they're in the TikTok. Uh, I usually post. It's like it's like, what your what would your life be like if you don't have a schedule? How would you live your life if you don't have a schedule? You live based off your feelings, your emotions. So I feel like online I have a three p.m. post time. So that's that one. Uh, oh yeah, trends. Following trends. I don't t typically follow trends unless I feel like. I can relate to it or yeah, if it's calling out to me, for an example, if it's something like in my niche, for an example, then I would follow that. But isn't, yeah, follow that trend, but don't follow for me. I don't follow things that aren't in my niche. If that kind of makes sense. I, I, I agree with what he says. And also, you know, I make informational content. I make educational content. So Trends don't apply to my stuff at all. Um, I also, I have an older following because like what I do is um, like mostly 80s and 90s music. Um, I will, uh, as far as tagging goes, sometimes I'll tag the artist, um, especially if I'm a fan. I did one on JJ Fad for Supersonic and they're on the app and they um, reposted and I was able to converse a little bit with JJ Fad, which is cool because they're a big influence on me as uh, using drum machines and for my electronic side. Um, as far as posting, I post every day once, sometimes twice, but I'm making I informational content. So like with Twitter, it's very intuitive for me. If I get an idea or a concept, I just tweet it whenever. It's very intuitive. I use Twitter like it just when I can't call my brother and tell him an idea because he's at work, I just would send it to Twitter. And with Insta, you know, I kind of just Insta and Facebook is I've been doing it for so long with TikTok for me. Like I said, I modeled it after working in television. So I promote every day, but I don't concern myself about I mean, post every day. I don't concern myself about time. What really matters is that you make content that's that's speaking what you're interested in. If you're interested in it, maybe someone else will be, you know, it's about sharing. If if we didn't write books, there would be no books to read. Mark Mullman, Xavier Goodman, Dury, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your insights and uh, all of that. It's It's been a pleasure. And um, thank you to the live audience. Thank you for your awesome questions. Thank you once again to the current staff. My name is Diane. I'm host of The Local Show, which airs from 6 p.m. Uh, 6 to 8 p.m. every Sunday. Please tune in and catch artists like uh, Mark Malm and Xavier Goodman, Dury, and more Minnesota music um, here in uh, On The Current and beyond. We are going to wrap the show with another uh, video from Mark Malman. Thanks again for tuning in, and uh, thanks Thank again you. to the panelists. Yeah.
and over the balcony and rising from the sea sunshine was coming overhead the sky lit up like a cigarette I didn't even go to sleep it was coming Line Check is supported in part by the Minnesota Clean Water Land and Legacy Amendment.